afternoon, everybody, and a very warm welcome indeed to the parish church of St Mary's, the church of Bottisford. If you're a member of the congregation, would you like to take your seats, please? We have been waiting and longing for this day. It's been a great joy uh, for us here in Bottisford to uh, organise a marriage such as this. At the beginning of the year, this country was, was absolutely enraptured by the possibility of an Englishman marrying an American girl. <laughs> and whilst we were getting to grips with that, we got a mystery phone call from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, the snow was on the ground and uh, Brian uh, asked whether it would be possible for this wedding to take place here in this church. I know that for Brian, this is uh, a special place for this ceremony to take place. He has uh, family history links uh, going back hundreds of years. And so we are delighted today to write a new chapter in his family history. But we are equally delighted to receive Heather here. We feel that Heather is one of our own and uh, we have enjoyed no end getting to know her. And to those of you who crossed the Atlantic to be part of this ceremony, we greet you, we welcome you. It's wonderful to have you here. And if you've only come from Nottinghamshire, that's okay as well. Uh, we welcome you also. Simply by being here, you are sending an important signal in terms of your love and support for Brian and Heather. You will offer them your encouragement and support as they make their wedding vows to each other in the presence of God. It may be that right now you are wondering what this ceremony holds in store. It is a time-honoured ceremony. Worship in this place has been going on for 800, 900 or more years. Many weddings have taken place here. It's a time-honoured thing to do. And Brian and Heather have chosen traditional words to express their promises and their love for each other. It is also a sacred and a special occasion. God is here with us. It is a joyful celebration, which means you can laugh, you can smile, particularly if I crack any jokes, please do. But now is the time to set aside any worries or concerns you may have had about the preparations for today. It is time to enter into and enjoy this service. It's also time to switch off mobile phones, any other portable devices of any kind, so that you can concentrate on playing your part in this ceremony. And so with Brian and Heather here, let us bow our heads and we pray for them on this their wedding day. O oh God, our Father, who by thy Son, Jesus Christ, has taught us that love is the fulfilling of the law, grant to Brian and Heather that loving one another, they may continue in thy love until their lives end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. And now we're going to join in singing the first of our two hymns. It's number 329 in the blue hymn book, which I hope you have been given. The hymn is Lord of the Dance. Our custom is to stand and sing our hymns. If you'd like to do that with us, that would be excellent. Number 329, Lord of the Dance.
Would you like to take your seats, please? And Julie is going to come and read our first Bible reading for us. First Corinthians, chapter 13. Love is indispensable, and yet I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging symbol. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now I see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know in full, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Thank you very much indeed, Julie, for, for reading that so beautifully for us. I'm not sure what the custom is at weddings in the States, but at this point in the service uh, here in the United Kingdom, uh, the minister gets the chance to say a few words of wisdom and advice. Uh, so I'm going to try and do that for you now. I wonder if you ever wonder what it's like to be somebody else. Something that I used to do a lot when I was, when I was a child, um, I used to sort of look at other people and pretend how wonderful it would be to be there. And a few years ago, when I was not a child, I went to the Founding Museum, which is a museum in London. And uh, one of the exhibits they have in the Founding Museum is the original harpsichord on which George Friedrich Handel composed the Alleluia Chorus. George Friedrich Handel is one of the greatest English composers uh, there is, except for the German, but don't worry about that. <laughs> and the, this, the, uh, the exhibition hall was empty. I did what I hope you would have done, because British people are very intimidated by those red robes. And I leant over the red robe, up to the harp's chord, where, where Handel composed the Alleluia Chorus, which fortunately has been disabled, so it doesn't make the noise. Uh, I played chopsticks on it. <laughs> I don't think my version of chopsticks is any better or worse than yours, but it just made me think, goodness, there I am, with my fingers on the keyboard, that George Friedrich Handel would have done when he composed the Alleluia Chorus. And let me think about what would it have been like to have been him. Do you know, the closest we come to experiencing and understanding what it is like to be God is when we give and receive love in the way that God does. That means loving without limits. It means loving without conditions. It's not, I'll love you if you do this, dot, dot, dot. It's not, I'll love you Monday through to Thursday, but Friday night I'm out with the lads. 
It means loving at times when we may not really feel inclined to do so. It means loving in ways that are patient and kind, in ways that persevere, that keep no record of wrongs and past hurts. That is the ideal that Julie has just set before Brian and Heather. And can any of us really live up to that kind of calling? A friend of mine once told me that the way to read that reading from 1 Corinthians 13 is every time you get to the word love to insert your name and to see how natural and right it sounds. I have some good days when about half of it sounds reasonably possible. But there are other days when I read through and I think David is kind, David is patient. I don't think so. But I don't live up to that aspiration. The description may fit when perhaps you're at the top of your form, or perhaps when you're in the early stages of romantic affection, when it's probably easier to be blind to the faults and failings of somebody else. But here's the thing. Love is a gift from God. He is the one who came up with the whole idea. And when we live in tune with God, it becomes a lot easier to love as he does. And the way he helps us to love without limits, without conditions, and without end, happens in two ways. It happens first of all when we follow the example he has given us in Jesus. And it happens when we allow him to give us as a gift the ability to learn to love in ways that are far beyond us. That is the greatest wedding gift that anyone can receive. And so my deepest wish for Brian and Heather, of whom I have become greatly fond over a very long distance, is that they will grow in a love that is patient, honest and determined. Love that is nurtured and, and encouraged by the example of others around you. By the support that you give them in their married life. That they may discover and cherish and grow a love that is abiding and lasts until their lives end. <coughs> a love that gives them and others a glimpse of the love of God and allows them to know the good things that he wills for them this day. Amen. And so, dearly beloved, we are gathered here in the sight of God and in the face of this congregation to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honourable estate instituted of God himself, signifying unto us the mystical union that is betwixt Christ and his church, which holy estate Christ adorned and beautified with his presence and the first miracle that he wrought in Cana of Galilee, and is commended in holy writ to be honourable among all men, and therefore is not by any to be enterprised nor taken in hand, unadvisedly, lightly, or wantonly but reverently, discreetly, soberly, and in the fear of God, duly considering the causes for which matrimony was ordained. First, it was ordained for the increase of mankind according to the will of God, and that children might be brought up in the fear and nurture of the Lord and to the praise of his holy name. Secondly, it was ordained in order that the natural instincts and affections implanted by God should be hallowed and directed aright, that those who are called of God to this holy estate should continue therein in pureness of living, of the other, both in prosperity and adversity. Into which holy estate these two persons present come now to be joined. Therefore, if any man can show any just cause why they may not lawfully be joined together, let him now speak or else hereafter hold his peace. Brian and I require and charge you both that you will answer at the dreadful day of judgment when the secrets of all hearts shall be disclosed, 
But if I were you that I knew in heaven, why you may not be lawfully joined together in matrimony, ye do now confess it. For be ye well assured that so many as are coupled together otherwise than God's word doth allow, are not joined together by God, neither is their matrimony lawful. Brian, wilt thou have this woman to thy wedding wife? To live together according to God's law in the holiest state of matrimony. Will thou love her, comfort her, honour and keep her? In sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep thee only unto her, so long as ye both shall live. I will. Heather, wilt thou have this man to thy wedding husband? To live together according to God's law in the holy estate of matrimony. Will thou love him, comfort him, honour and keep him? In sickness and in health, and forsaking all other, keep thee only unto him, so long as you both shall live. I will. Who brings this woman to be married to this man? I do. I, Brian, take thee heaven. I, Brian, take thee heaven. To my wedded wife. To my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. And thereto I give thee my troth. And thereto I give thee my troth. I, Heather, take thee, Brian. I, Heather, take thee, Brian. To my wedded husband. To my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or worse. For better or worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. And thereto I give thee my truth. And thereto I give thee my truth. Matthew has been waiting here patiently as guardian of the rings. Uh, he was chosen for the job because he's responsible and uh, he's remembered to bring them along. Brian and Kevin are both chosen to wear a wedding ring. And the wedding ring is an eternal symbol. It has no beginning and no end. It represents, if you like, the love of God. And the other thing about it, which any reputable nurse will tell you, is that there is a, a vein or artery that runs from the ring finger right through to the heart. So there is a connection between the visible sign of wearing the ring and the expression of love within the heart. I've given you the big build-up, Matthew, so you better have the rings made. <laughs> Would you like to put them on the book? That's a little bit of a the box for you. Would you like to look after that? So just before Brian and Heather exchange these rings, I'm going to say a prayer of a blessing upon you. Heavenly Father, by thy blessing, let these rings be to Brian and Heather the symbol of unending love and faithfulness, to remind them of the vow and covenant which they have made to this day, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Say these words after me, please. 
Heather, with this ring, I thee wed. Heather, with this ring, I thee wed. With my body, I thee honour. With my body, I thee honour. And all my worldly goods with thee I share. And all my worldly goods with thee I share. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It's not easy getting wedding rings on in hot weather, I can tell you. <laughs> Brian, with this ring, I thee wed. Brian, with this ring, I thee wed. With my body, I thee honor. With my body, I thee honor. And all my worldly goods with thee I share. And all my worldly goods with thee I share. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O eternal God, creator and preserver of all mankind, giver of all spiritual grace, the author of everlasting life, send thy blessing upon these thy servants, this man and this woman, whom we bless in thy name, that living faithfully together they may surely perform and keep the vow and covenant betwixt them that, whereof these rings given and received are a token and pledge and they may ever remain in perfect love and peace together, and live according to thy laws, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Those whom God has joined together, let no one put asunder. For as much as Brian and Heather have consented together in holy wedlock, and have witnessed the same before God and this company, and thereto have given and pledged their troth either to other, and have declared the same by giving and receiving of a ring, and by the joining of hands, I pronounce that they be man and wife together, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brian, you may kiss the bride if you wish to do so. Turn around now. You are a very good congregation. It spoils it if you say we're now going to give you a spontaneous round of applause and you are right on the button. Thank you for that. This next part of the ceremony is my favourite bit. Because when a couple comes to be, uh, to be married in church, as Brian and Heather have, the first person who can get to offer them anything at that moment of marriage is the minister. Uh, it's my privilege to pray God's blessing on their marriage together. So I'm going to invite them to kneel if they can, whilst we do that, to get a little bit of help from some of the bridesmaids. And as I come to, uh, to say this prayer for Brian and Heather, I invite you simply for a moment to pause and consider what you hope and wish and pray for them in their married life together. Brian and Heather, may God bless Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully with his favour look upon you, and so fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace, that ye may so live together in this life, that in the world to come ye may have life everlasting. Amen. You have to carefully get up and you make your assistance to your new wife. You have to come and take a seat. 
know. <laughs>
speech, I kept thinking, I can't believe Heather's getting married in less than an hour. <laughs> uh, kidding. Um, we're really growing up um, with Heather, who's always been an adventure and a blast. Um, she was always very much a natural leader. She would organize the, uh, the neighborhood at a round of kickball or softball. And she particularly excelled at causing a little bit of mischief. <laughs> um, and one of Heather's favorite types of mischief was convincing me to do things that I really, really shouldn't do. Um, and one of my favorite examples of this comes from when we were visiting my grandfather. So he lives out um, in his backyard as a fishing pier connected to kind of a muddy marsh. And one day I just brought brand new white shoes with little jewels on them. And Heather convinced me that I should just run and jump off of that pier into the marsh. And so I did. The, the mud probably went up above the thighs. My shoes got sucked into the mud and off of my feet. We tried to dig them out. I don't know if we succeeded. Maybe mom remembers. <laughs> um, and needless to say, I got into a little bit of trouble. So since then, I've always wondered, you know, if Heather could find someone that could maybe stand up to her strong spirit and not be convinced to jump into a marsh unnecessarily. <laughs> so I was really excited when one day I got a call from Heather and she's like, hey, I'm dating this new guy. I really, really like him. And I learned that a big part of his job was negotiation. <laughs> um, and so eventually I was lucky enough to get to meet Brian. One of the first times I met him, he cooked me chicken tiki masala. And that's when I knew he was definitely the one. <laughs> but um, more seriously, I think what Heather and Brian really share is that they're both probably some of the most generous people that I know and just really love and care for other people. And so just to give a few examples, I'm really into Harry Potter. And so anytime either one of them walks by something with Harry Potter on it, I get a call immediately asking if I need it. <laughs> when I turned the legal drinking age, Heather flew out to see me and paid for all of my drinks for the entire night. And uh, she has a few stories about that. <laughs> Uh, and later, when I was buying my first car, Brian was on the phone with me the whole time, helping me negotiate with the salesman to get the best price. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I really am just so happy that I feel like they were able to find someone who can match each other in both their generosity and also in ways uh, of negotiation. <laughs> uh, and so, Brian, I really just want to welcome you to the family. We all love you very, very much and are so happy to make you an official part of the family. Um, and I just want to end with a few tips that I got for you that guarantee a long and happy marriage. So I got these off of Google, so I know that they're going to be good. <laughs> all right, tip number one. When you're wrong, admit it. And when you're right, shut up. <laughs> all right? Number two is that the best way to remember your anniversary is to forget it once. <laughs> uh, and number three, a happy wife is a happy life. <laughs> Cheers to Mr. and Mrs. Robinson. <laughs> All right, well, as is tradition, the groom now follows. I'll also say that this tradition is the low point in the speeches, <laughs> so I have no expectations that you'll enjoy it. <laughs> Actually, I am quite excited to be able to get up and speak in front of you today, because I know for the next 40 years I'm going to have to sit down and <laughs> You need me louder? <laughs> My audience calls. <laughs> yeah. So, first thing, let's do a toast. I want to thank everybody for coming here today. Some of you have come a very great distance. Brian, don't lean back or you're going to catch fire. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was hot. Okay, you do. <laughs> Some of you have faced great challenges in actually making it here and I want to say a sincere thank you from myself and Mrs. Robinson Yay! 
for the hard work and endeavor. We appreciate it very much. If you hadn't have been here, it wouldn't have been the same. It would have been considerably cheaper. You could have negotiated us not coming. So I'm going to steal the first toast. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd ask you to be upstanding. I'd like you to toast Mrs. Robinson. Mrs. Robinson. Thank you. The speech continues. Please be seated. So, so it has been said, it has been said, actually by my now mother-in-law, by Julie, that Heather and I are the perfect couple. Oh. I think what she was trying to say when she said this was that we... Maybe you were a little moody. <laughs> Maybe we can be a little difficult. No. I would go so far as to say that some mornings I do wake up grumpy. Oh. Other mornings you ain't minded. I let her sleep. <laughs> I want to take a moment to thank the Woodards and the Lees for welcomingly to your family. I think by now you've realised that you did get the short end of the stick. <laughs> <laughs> and to Julie and Mike, a sincere thank you. You've given me the greatest gift of all. You've given me the gift of your daughter. I want to cherish this gift, and I tell you I'll enjoy it unwrapping it later this evening. <laughs> I'd like to raise another toast to the bridesmaids. You all look exceptionally beautiful. Kate, you look sincerely beautiful, and I am completely biased. Your I also thank you for not talking, Kate, uh, talking Heather out of today. So, uh, a glass, a toast to the bridesmaids. Bridesmaids! Right. 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 I'd also like to say thank you to my best man, Matthew. You have stood by me all day, you've stood by me through thick and thin. And it is very difficult for Dad to realise that there is now a younger, better and more handsome version of himself. It's not the rest of the front. So, let me finish by telling you a little about Heather. She's been dreading this, by the way. There's been a hundred times she's asked me to say, what are you going to say about me? <laughs> but I want to finish by saying a little of Heather. She's the most honest and faithful person I've ever met. She cries when she's happy. She forgives me in an instant. She truly cares for people, especially the old. Me again. <laughs> she's a fantastic nurse and she does an incredibly difficult job. I find her devilishly beautiful, and she has only one fault. She doesn't know how special she is. So my promise to you, from this day forward, I'll do my best to tell you every day how special you are. Thank you, everyone. Before we all start uh, talking again, uh, I'm deputising for the best man who has declined the offer of giving the speech. You really should do it, Matt. And I want to give away a family secret. Oh. I want to tell my grandchildren a story that I don't think has been told and I don't think my son is aware of. To do it, I need to go back to the day before he was born. Oh. We'd had a discussion over the nine months 
would it be a boy or would it be a girl? And we decided we wanted a girl. A girl. <laughs> we even had a name for our daughter. It was Sharon. Sharon. <laughs> Hi, Sharon. <laughs> The big day arrived, and I remember being at my in-laws and running about like a chicken with its head chopped off for about five minutes when Mary said, it's time. Mm. So we toured to the maternity hospital in our Mark II Cortina. I remember it doing 75, which I think was pretty impossible for a Mark II Cortina. And that road. Well, I decided to take root somewhere and wait for our baby to be born. I was looking forward to meeting her. But a matron said, go home. So I had to go home and wait till the next morning. I rang up first thing in the morning and I was told we had a girl. Boy. Boy. A girl. <laughs> <laughs> and her name was Sharon. I told everyone in our family. Do you remember it? I remember it. Yeah. I was overjoyed. <laughs> Well, I went to the hospital and I met Mary and said, how was it? And she said, it was a bit rough. And I said, but we've got a girl. And you looked at me and said, no, a boy. And I said, no, a girl. No, a boy. We didn't know what we'd got. Have you heard this story? No. <laughs> what a wonderful moment I've got. <laughs> so we asked a nurse and the nurse looked at the board on the end of the bed and said, you've got a boy. No, it can't be a boy. It cannot be a boy. I decided to go and look. So I went, I went into this room full of cribs and I looked at all the labels and I found one that said, normal Robinson boy. <laughs> I looked in and all I could see was the top of a head underneath the blanket. Sharon, you can't be a boy. I grabbed the covers and peeled them back. The first shot was Sharon had had a rough birth. Her head was bright red, there was a big V down her forehead. Remember that V? Oh, yeah. And she got a head like a football. <laughs> It's not changed. Uh, the second thing, as I peeled the covers further back, I put my fingers inside the nappy. In American, that's a diaper. It was not very pleasant in there. I told you I'd get this out. You did. And I lifted it up to look inside. I was right, it wasn't pleasant. And what's more, I could see that she was, in fact, a boy. A boy. A boy. <laughs> <laughs> As I eased it back, I woke her, I mean him, up. <laughs> and she sh he shot up the cot so hard that he, he hit his head on the top and stared at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> I reeled back in horror. I opened my mouth and I put my fingers in my mouth. <laughs> Whereupon all the lights started to go dim. <laughs> my arms and legs went like jelly. And I thought I was going for a sleep. <laughs> but I went back to you and I said, He's a boy. We better rethink this. <laughs> we didn't get our daughter that day. But I'm pleased to say we've got one to death. Oh. <laughs> message for you both from David, Sarah, and uh, the children. I can't think of Joseph and Isabel. I'm getting old. Um, <laughs> I wish you all the best and say they're sorry they can't be today to be with you today. So just one last toast. Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew 
that was coming. I'll go with it. It's Sharon. It's in Heather. It's Sharon and Heather. Now we know what they're talking about. I really know the call. Thank you. 
Yes.
seen this guy go over the time while I do. <laughs> Look at each other, teach other. Put your arm around her. <laughs> Snuggle in. Then please get them out. Stand up and make your way inside for the cutting of the carrot. <laughs> Pre warned if you get in the way of the photographers, they will knock you out of the way. Trust me, it's happened. To me, that is. That's it, come on in, guys. So, Brian, we'd love to go do the side of it. Oh, I just get it? Just get it. What do you want to cut? Yeah, I think you cut the front, guys. Can we tell the soul, Sharon? I know, I'm going to go that way. Don't go down the hole. Go that way. Don't hide. Thank <laughs> you.